Y'all get ready. Yes, you get oh, ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come out here and do an update on the whole K Michelle situation. How do I say goodbye? Since a bunch of y'all have been hitting me up on social media, let me know that once again, Negro Domus's tin hat, okay? My tin hat was tingling, and I ended up being right about the situation. Basically, K. Michelle was low-key blasting Jonathan Fernandez, which I already suspected. And I was one of the few YouTubers who caught her out on the bullshit, okay? And I stated in my original video that at the end of the day, don't nobody owe you shit. You don't know what folks are going through, why they weren't able to be there by your side. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and play this small flashback, okay? Go ahead and check this out, and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. So my thing is, don't nobody owe you nothing. You know, appreciate the people who were there and who came to spend time with you, but there's no reason to throw shade at the folks who weren't there because they might have their reasons for not coming to see you. I All right, so you guys just watched that flashback brought to you by Negro Domus, okay? So anyhow, once I posted that video, a lot of people saw, a lot of people watched it. And one thing I noticed is that people started going to Jonathan's Instagram page and they were coming for him. They're saying that K. Michelle put him on and how dare he not be there for her. Folks started going off on him. People were being very, very disrespectful to him, not knowing his backstory, okay? So after he was getting drugged by folks on social media, compliments of K. Michelle, he took to his Instagram live and he went the hell off. He spilled that tea. He even admitted to getting damn butt injections himself. I'm like, well, damn, boo. So that's why your booty's so plump. I wouldn't have guessed that he got illegal butt injections, but that's a whole nother video, okay? So anyways, I want you guys to go ahead and watch this and check out what Jonathan had to say about the entire situation. Check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Hey guys, I have some I have some things I want to get off my chest. I'm just waiting for some people to log on because what's happening is really unfucking fair. So I'm waiting for some more people to log on so I can tell y'all exactly what the fuck is happening. And now know something about me. I'm not the kind of person that goes on live and and puts posts up and and all this shit when they're in turmoil and when they're going through stuff. But when you are going to consistently attack my character, we're going to have the conversation on live the way you like to do it. So let's talk about it. What should I address first? Okay, let's start with this notion of, of Jonathan is fake because every week he has a new best friend. Let's talk about that. So, as a gay boy, as a gay boy, okay, I have many different kinds of friends, okay? So, I have some gay boy best friends that y'all ain't never seen who've been in my life, okay? Who's been in my life because they don't, they don't belong on Love & Hip Hop. They don't belong on nobody else's fucking reality show, okay? So, those are some of my best friends who've also been in my life since I was 15 years old when I came out of the fucking closet. And I'm 33, so y'all can do some math. Since I'm such a bad person, why have these people been in my life for 17 fucking years? Let's start there. I have straight female best friends. Some are celebrities, some are not. So this whole, oh, he's flip-flopping because all of a sudden he's best friends with Yandy. Let me tell y'all something about me and Yandy. Yandy and I go way back, okay? Since Love & Hip Hop started. Uh, yeah, I, Yandy and I were best friends before Love Hip, before K. Michelle dreamt of being on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Before there was a Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, Yandy and me were already friends, okay? I was at her wedding. I was at her baby shower. Do you know how old Omir is? I was at her baby shower with Omir. So... Y'all are not going to sit here and tell me his new best friend. Anais has been in my life since we were kids. We used to sneak into clubs together. 
This is not a new best friend. She might be new to y'all because she's reaching into a new market, but she's not new to me. So this whole, he got a new best friend. Yeah, he's flip-flopping. Yeah, she's telling the truth. Is she telling the truth? Is she telling the truth? Because I don't fall out with my friends. Anais and I had a disagreement that in real life would not have played out in front of the world. Because we're not like that. We're private people. And that's like a sister to me. We could curse each other the fuck out and be making out the next minute. Because we're fucking crazy. That's who we are. That, her, and Kay Michelle are my only two friends that I've ever fallen out with. Everybody else who's been my best friend has been my best friend for years. And let me go down the list of best friends since y'all are so motherfucking concerned. So that there's no questions in the future when I pose these people. Here we go. It's Johan, Jonas... Solomon, Alcides, Karen, Alice, Emily B, Yandy, Anais, Kim, and Kenny. Those are my fucking best friends. If your name ain't on that list, well then, uh, sorry to tell you, boo boo, you ain't my best friend. And I won't be calling somebody who's, who, who's not in that list a best friend. So we can clarify that. Second thing, this whole, K. Michelle gave you everything. K. Michelle created, did she? Because last I checked, Last I checked, I ended up on her show because I was a makeup artist. Last I checked, I was a makeup artist for her because I was good at my job. Okay? So when you check into your jobs, to your 9 to 5, is do you look at your CEO or, your, or the boss of your company like, this is my creator, this is my end-all, be-all. I have to kiss the ground that he walks that If he takes a shit, I will go and eat it. No. No. We became friends like I become friends with everybody. With everybody that I work with. You know why? Because I genuinely give a fuck and care about people. And I genuinely gave a fuck and cared about Kimberly. I sure did. Regardless of what she wants to tell y'all, I don't care. I did. I don't fall out with people. Okay? And when I saw that... She falls out with all her friends. I'm like, she really does need a great person in her life. I too was believing the hype. Yeah, maybe it is them. Maybe it was everybody, everybody who slighted her throughout the years. Yeah, it was them. It wasn't her. Still, let me be a good friend. Let me be there for her. If I'm such a user, if I'm such a manipulator, why after season three of K. Michelle, my life, I was like, I'm good. I'm done. I actually tried to quit halfway through the season. Halfway through the season, over some bullshit with some fillers. Over so, and I'm not going to go deep into that because I'm not the kind of person to talk about people, especially that kick people when they're low. I like to have a conversation with you when you're at your high. But enough is enough. Enough is a fuck enough. This narrative of the victim and the villain and the, life is not that dramatic, people. Television sensationalizes things because you see for 60 minutes something that took months to film they, t they take the most sensational things life is not that dramatic some people go through surgery and they have complications I myself have had over 20 plastic surgery procedures I know the complications that come with it I too have had to have a blood transfusion in the past you know who's by my side? my mama who was supposed to be there were my friends there? No. My friends were at their jobs. They were with their family. They were doing the things that they were supposed to be doing. That being said, moving forward, I had a conversation with Kay about eight or nine days ago. She called me to check up on another friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours. We talked. She told me everything that was going on. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. I'm so happy that you're taking this stuff out of your body. It's going to be a long process, but it's going to be worth it, especially if you're feeling so sick from it. You've actually opened up my eyes and I'm gonna look into removing the one that I had injected into myself as well because we have the same product. And she said, I'm telling you friend, don't fucking play around, take it out before it's too late. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna pray for you, I'm on the run, I'm gonna call you back. Did I call her back? I didn't call her back. She never once told me she was going back into the hospital. <clears throat> Time passed. There's stuff going on with my family that I don't feel the need to divulge. But now I have to talk about it. Now I have to talk about it because she's making it seem like I was running on my way to brunch. Was I? Was I? I just want you people to know something. My biological brother, okay? My biological brother, the boy that I raised, raised him with my sister, my sisters, and my mom. 
is completely distraught because last night his father passed away, a man who has been ill. My sister and him, I haven't even heard from my sister. She can't even talk, can't even pick up the phone for her brother. But I have to come on live and defend myself against attacks and lies over somebody who constantly needs to play this victim role. Friend, I want you to get better. I want you to feel great. But you will not heal if you do not put your mind in a positive place. Medicine can only function in your body when you're positively thinking, when you're receiving positive affirmations in your brain. Don't make your illness about anybody else. Focus on your health. Everybody's going through stuff. Had you called me like you're saying you did, you would have known that my own family is going through hell right now. You would have known that. But how could you know? You're so consumed with your own life, with all the stuff you have going on, allegedly, that we're supposed to run to your beck and call every waking moment. And people have stuff happening to. And we were there for each other, and when we're in the same city, it's like no time has passed like friends should be. But anybody who has a friend who lives on another, in another state or another country knows that you maintain a friendship through phone conversations and when you can. When I went to Atlanta, I had to do some press in Atlanta. I stayed three extra days. I said, friend, I'm going to go visit the restaurant. Friend, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to um, stay extra days because I know you're performing here and you're on tour and I want to show support. I want to show love. And I did that and we had a great time. Went to the after party and everything. That's what friends do. What more do you want from me? If there's going to be this, he's a good friend, he's my brother, no, I hate him, he's my, then we don't need to be friends. Then, we, then, then fine, then fine. And if this is the only method of communication and, and, and the only way that we can speak is going on each other's lives, then so be it. I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to get off this thing. I want people to know that. I am focused on my family. My family needs me more than ever right now because they too are going through things. I myself, look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I look like I've been crying. Like, it's not always about you, the celebrity. People go through things, too. People go through their own shit. And while what you went through is awful, and I would not wish that on anybody, I also wish that you would have reached out and said, I'm going to the hospital. Not purposely. Not tell me so that I won't find out. Then cry on live. If you could open your life to cry to the world, call your friends. <laughs> call your friends. You know how many mutual friends of ours I call? And I'm like, what's happening with Kim? People are telling me that she's on live, she's sick. What's happening? We don't know. We just saw it on live too. She's not responding to anybody. She's deleted so many people. It's always a, I'm fine. Uh, I'm good, don't look for me, everything gonna be fine, just, I, just people keep doing me wrong. And, no, 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 people ain't doing you wrong, no. People are living their lives. You reach out when you need them. You reach out to congratulate them on their successes. You reach out to check up on them. You don't only call them in your deepest, darkest moments. And you don't only call them when you need something. Every time you call somebody, you can't say, Oh, by the way, I need you to do this, this. No! Friends are not workers. Friends are friends. And if you don't believe that I am the friend that you all thought I was, check my fucking uh, trajectory of friendships. Because she's the only friend who has such vile things to say about me. And the lies, the lies that she's saying, the things that she puts out there, dramatizing them, because it's always a dramatic flair to a little bit of truth. There are some truths hidden in there. But the dramatization of it all. Saying that I made her quit the show and I begged her leave the company. Why the fuck would I do that? She didn't even want to know. She didn't even want to hear certain producers' names. And I made them reconnect. I made her reconnect with them. Why would I do that? And in the same breath say... Leave the production company and then, oh, but then he going to turn around and do the show. Why would I not be being given the opportunity to tell a gay story, to tell my own story about gay conversion therapy and all this shit that has gone on in my life? Why not? And why is that a slight to you? Why not celebrate me? Why not be happy for me? Why not say, friend, you did a great job. 
I'm happy for you. Or call me and give me advice and say, hey, this is your first time at the rodeo. And, you know, the focus is on you now. So maybe do this and do that, which a lot of friends of mine did do. A lot of people who've been on this show have done. They called me and gave me great advice. You ran for the hills, sis. On that note, I'm getting off this thing, but I want you people to know everything doesn't have to live in this box. This app of Instagram is fake. This is stuff that people put out there because they want you to believe certain things. And don't think for one second that because it doesn't live in this box and in this screen that it's not real. It's very real. People live very real lives. And life has been very real for me for the last week as well. I just don't go on live and post about it. I try to keep it positive. I try to keep it PG. I try to keep my private life as private as I can. As I can. What I can control, I'm going to control. And if my family don't want to be up on this live, and if my family's business doesn't want to be up on this live, I don't need to put it out there. But it's also not fair that I have to come on here on such a difficult day for my family and defend myself from bullshit. Okay? Fake fucking news. Fake fucking news. And if you're believing that, then you're just as miserable as the person that we're talking about. Now check that. Alrighty then, okay? When I tell you Jonathan got her ass all the way together, okay? You know, I definitely believe him. You can see the tears welling up in his eyes. And like I stated in my original video, you don't know what your friends are going through. And come to find out, his little brother's father passed away and that's what he's been dealing with. The reason why I can talk about stuff like this so candidly is because I've been through it. So why UK Michelle fans were coming for me and telling me to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up and if this person is a real friend, they be there for you no matter what that's not always the case I've been through this as you guys all know I recently had surgery okay this was back in November after Thanksgiving I had major surgery and I had a lot of so-called friends who claimed they were going to come and see me afterwards and I had surgery an hour away and my mom my aunt my uncle and one of my favorite cousins she actually drove a whole hour just to come and sit with me after surgery and you know be there with me and then when I came home a few days later you know folks claimed they was coming that Sunday people who literally lived not even 15 minutes from me claimed they were going to come and come visit me and guess who all came None of them, okay? None of them came to see me after I had surgery. People text, people checked on me, but they didn't come through. Did I get on social media crying tattoo tears and blasting them and saying that they're not shit? No, because I'm grown enough to realize that, you know what? People do have to work. People do have to pay bills. And sometimes people can't always be there for you. So instead of getting in my feelings and being upset, I focused on the people who were there for me after my surgery, who helped get me back better, who helped take care of me, like my mother, my mother-in-law. Yes, I'm divorced, but I still call her my mother-in-law. You know what I'm saying? My boys and my brothers. They were the ones who had my back after surgery. And I focused on them and I thanked them and I loved them for loving me and helping me get over that hump. And even my subscribers. I had people who reached out to me all the time who sent me text messages and well wishes and you know I'm just checking on UT I just want to make sure you're okay all of that meant the world to me and that's what I was saying in that video stop focusing on the people who couldn't come focus on the ones who were there all that shade at the end of her damn long ass dissertation it made no sense whatsoever because one of my really good friends who I kind of thought was going to be there and come see me she didn't you know what I'm saying and I didn't talk to her I didn't call her because I figured whenever she's ready to call me she will and she ended up contacting me a month later and she apologized like you know I wasn't there and I should have been there when you got out the hospital but this was my situation her aunt got diagnosed with cancer one of her aunts that she's really close with she ended up getting diagnosed with cancer and several times during that month it had turned for the worse so you know she knew I was okay you know what I'm saying she knew I was fine because she would see me update little things on social media she would text here and there but her aunt was not doing so well matter of fact her aunt just died about a week and a half ago so you know 
imagine if I would have got mad and blasted her for not coming to see me. And then the whole time she's dealing with that. And I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. You never know what other people are going through. Be appreciative of the people who are in your corner and to the ones who aren't there and who aren't able to make it. They probably have a story to tell. And then when you guys reconnect and get back up, then you guys just pick up where you left off. You know, like I said before, my surgery was serious. It was nothing that I did to myself. You know what I'm saying? It's some serious shit that happened to me. So, and even in that situation, people weren't there for me. People couldn't come through and that's okay. In her situation, this is some shit that she voluntarily did to herself. And she's upset about people not being there. And y'all are making all these excuses only because she's a celebrity. Had that been a regular schmegler chick who got butt injections and put silicone in her ass and was crying and upset that her friends weren't there for her, people would have drugged her and been like, oh, well, you did that to yourself. You better be happy that your mama was there. People would have talked so much shit, but because it's K. Michelle, I'm not supposed to point out the obvious. No, sorry, boo. I'm unbiased. I'm going to point out when I see bullshit, okay? K. Michelle had no business blasting anybody who wasn't there. And that was low-key shade at Jonathan. And I'm glad that Jonathan clapped back. I'm glad that he stuck up for himself. And I'm glad that he explained his side of the situation. And it's really sad. If she can get on social media and cry to a bunch of strangers who don't know her from a can of paint, if she can get on there and cry, she could have just as easily caught Jonathan to find out what was really going on if she was that hurt. She could have just reached out to him and told Jonathan how she felt everything doesn't need to go on social media if somebody's your real friend you're going to think about that friendship first before trying to low-key blast them and throw shade it's not that serious okay and k michelle knew she was wrong for that because yesterday she took to twitter and this is what she wrote k michelle says that's my friend we cried it out and he's headed to me so like I said in my initial video, in my personal opinion, she did that for attention. She didn't need to do all that. She didn't need to blast that man. She didn't need to get that man's name drugged through the mud as if he was a bad friend to her. All she wanted was attention from him. All she wanted was her friend to be in her corner and to be there. And that's fine if that's what she wanted. Then all she needed to do was call him and reach out to him and not take all that negativity to social media. When you're going through something serious as surgery, especially some real life, life and death shit like what she just went through she needs nothing but positive vibes she needs to think nothing but positivity that's what's going to help heal her all this negativity and dwelling on the pain and dwelling on the hurt and dwelling on who's there and who's not there all that's going to do is slow down her healing process okay so all you K. Michelle fans, y'all, y'all can have a tall glass to shut the fuck up, okay? I kept the real in my video. I stand by my damn video. And obviously, Jonathan coming out with his video basically, you know, verified everything I stated in my video that all of that stuff was unnecessary and unwarranted. I'm glad that they're back friends. I'm glad that they talked it out, cried it out. I'm glad that he's, you know, heading over there to go be with her. But like I said, folks need to stop looking for attention and validation through social media. She could have kept it positive, spoke her truth, all that extra stuff. I wasn't feeling it and I'm still not feeling it and I stand by everything I stated in that damn video so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this updated information concerning Kay Michelle and Jonathan basically reading her for the filth and letting her know about herself how do you feel about Jonathan's post and what he had to say do you believe everything that he was saying and then how do you feel about Kay Michelle finally coming back and saying that you know they're friends again you know they cried it out and he's heading her way and then do you agree with me that she had no business even posting all that negativity about who wasn't there on her social media page because she knew what that would cause when she posted that information so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation once again concerning Kay Michelle and Jonathan Fernandez. All right, deuces. <laughs> hey, you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.